You have a great idea for a new game, but it really needs that big screen in your living room to come to life. You could write for a game console, but then you'd lose all those millions of people with mobile phones. What is a game developer to do? With the new Google Cast Remote Display APIs, your app can now render directly to any Cast receiver, like Chromecast. Remote Display is all about combining the amazing rendering capabilities of mobile devices with the immersive power of large TVs to create compelling interactive content. It extends the existing Google Cast APIs, which were previously only focused on controlling HTML5 apps running on Cast receivers. Remote Display supports both Android and iOS. The APIs are different, so I'm going to show you how to integrate Remote Display for each of them. Before you start writing code, take a step back and make sure your design will work with two very different screens. The first screen is a remote TV. This is where you'll want to display the main action of your game. The second screen is a smartphone or tablet screen. Players don't spend a lot of time looking at it, which makes it a great option to display secondary information like statistics, player inventories, or an in-game store. You can also display a virtual controller. Finally, your game can either require a second screen or be optional. Have a clear description of what it requires, both in the marketing material and in the game. But enough about design. Let's go over the Android APIs. On Android, Remote Display combines and extends the Media Router presentation and service APIs. You'll use Media Router for device discovery, presentation as the container for the first screen content, and service to separate the lifecycle of the presentation from that of your activity. Let's go through each of these. The Media Router APIs let you discover available cast receivers. Remote Display works the same way as any other cast-enabled app in this respect, and we have a great video on the Google Developers channel about discovery. Check it out. The Presentation APIs is Android's gateway to other screens. The Remote Display APIs provide a specialized presentation that your app must subclass to well, present your game on the remote screen. You can, in fact, display any view you want, from a regular Android layout to an OpenGLES surface. Finally, the Remote Display APIs provide a local Android service to keep rendering even while your main Android activity is backgrounded. This also makes it possible to control your game with a Bluetooth controller while the mobile device sits on the player's coffee table. You may be asking yourself, what about audio? Well, you don't have to do anything. Remote display automatically mirrors the device's audio when your game is in the foreground. All right, let's look at the iOS APIs now. On iOS, the remote display APIs provide low-level functionality to send video and audio to the cast receiver and services to start a remote display session. There are four stages in the lifecycle of a remote display session. Connect, negotiate, send, and stop. Let's dive into the details. The connect stage includes discovering a suitable cast receiver, connecting to it, and launching your remote display receiver app on it. Like on Android, this works exactly the same way as for any other iOS cast enable app. And like for Android, we have a sweet video on the Google Developers channel about this process. In the negotiation stage, use the remote display channel and configuration APIs to offer session parameters to the receiver. If the receiver is happy with the settings, you'll have established a remote display session. It's finally time to render to that big screen. In the send stage, your app renders video and audio frames to the remote display session. Each app will integrate remote display in a different way, so I'll go over some generic tips and tricks that should help you. For audio, the basic idea is to redirect your game's audio stream from the system's audio device to the remote display session. Don't forget to silence output to the device's built-in speakers. Otherwise, your players will feel like they're in an echo chamber. For video, create a frame input object matching your rendering API. Frame inputs are adapters that make it easy to integrate your rendering code with remote display. The general flow is to render to a texture instead of a system surface. Once you have your remote display frame encoded, hand over the texture to the frame input for processing. And that's it. After that, you can render a different frame for the device's screen as you would normally do. OK, if you remember two minutes ago, I said there were four stages. The last one is stop, and it's pretty easy. To end a remote display session, you just kill the remote display receiver app using the core cast APIs. That's it. 
We are super excited to see the amazing games and experiences you will build with Google Cast Remote Display. Don't forget to check developers.google.com slash cast to get more information on getting started with Remote Display. We also have complete sample code available on GitHub. Also, check out the Game Manager APIs, which make writing multiplayer games that run directly on a cast receiver super easy. Thanks.